Welcome to Arsenal Studios. This is Learning English with Movies. In this video, we'll talk about one of the most acclaimed and controversial sci-fi films of all time, A Clockwork Orange. We will also practice using the conditionals. If you are new here, the goal of this channel is to help intermediate English language students practice and improve their English skills by using movies as the main topic. If you like our content, Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. A Clockwork Orange is a 1971 film directed by acclaimed director Stanley Kubrick. The film is based on the 1962 novel of the same name by Anthony Burgess. Clockwork means, a mechanism or device that works with precision and regularity, often powered by a spring or a series of gears. The film is set in a dystopian future, in which a young delinquent named Alex, played by Malcolm McDowell, leads a gang of thugs known as Droogs in a series of brutal crimes. Dystopian means, relating to an imaginary or real place where everything is unpleasant or bad, often characterized by a totalitarian or oppressive government, environmental disaster, or societal collapse. The story follows Alex's journey as he is arrested and subjected to a controversial experiment in rehabilitation, which strips him of his ability to choose between good and evil. Strip means to deprive something or someone of its essential qualities or features. The film is known for its striking visuals, disturbing violence, and exploration of themes such as free will, morality, and the nature of evil. Striking is an adjective that can be used to describe something that is particularly noticeable or impressive. It has been both critically acclaimed and controversial, with some praising its bold storytelling and Kubrick's direction, while others have criticized its depiction of violence and its apparent glorification of evil. Bold means showing courage and confidence, often characterized by a willingness to take risks or stand out from the crowd. The film's soundtrack was also an important aspect of the film's production. Kubrick chose a mix of classical music, including pieces by Beethoven, Rossini, and Purcell, and electronic music. Soundtrack is the musical score or selection of songs that accompany a film, television show, or other visual media. Kubrick's direction was known for his perfectionism, and the film's production was no exception. He would often do many takes of a scene to get the perfect shot, and he was also known for being very hands-on with the editing process. Hands-on means being actively involved in the process, often involving physical or practical work, rather than just theoretical or conceptual work. The film was a commercial success and was nominated for four Academy Awards, including Best Picture. It has since become a cult classic and has been the subject of much scholarly analysis and interpretation. Scholarly means an in-depth and rigorous examination of a topic, usually involving critical evaluation of existing research and theories. It's worth noting that the film was withdrawn from UK theaters by Kubrick himself, Due to the copycat violence occurred after its release, it wasn't available to purchase until after Kubrick's death in 1999. A copycat is someone who imitates or copies the behavior, actions, or style of another person or group. Stanley Kubrick was an American film director, producer, screenwriter, and photographer. He directed his first film, Fear and Desire, in 1953, and went on to direct a number of critically acclaimed and influential films throughout his career, including Spartacus, Dr. Strangelove, 2001 A Space Odyssey, The Shining, and Full Metal Jacket. Kubrick was known for his meticulous and perfectionist approach to filmmaking, often spending years on research, pre-production, and post-production for his films. Meticulous means showing great attention to detail and precision, often involving a methodical or systematic approach. He also had a distinctive visual style, and his films are known for their striking imagery and symbolism. He also had a reputation for being a demanding and exacting director, who expected a lot from his cast and crew. Exacting means requiring great attention to detail and accuracy, often characterized by a demanding or precise standard. Kubrick's films often dealt with complex and thought-provoking themes, and dealt with a wide range of topics, from war to science fiction to horror and crime. Thought-provoking means 
stimulating or challenging one's thoughts or ideas, often characterized by a deeper philosophical concept. He was also known for his ability to take on different genres and make them his own. To take on means to accept or undertake a challenge or responsibility, often involving a difficult or daunting task. Kubrick's films have been the subject of much critical and scholarly analysis, and many of them are considered to be classics of the medium. Kubrick passed away on March 7, 1999. He was in the middle of production of his last film, Eyes Wide Shut, which was released in 1999, and was posthumously dedicated to him. Posthumously means, occurring or published after the death of the person involved, often relating to a work or achievement completed during their lifetime. The story takes place in a dystopian future, in which crime and violence are rampant, and the government has implemented a program of rehabilitation, designed to cure criminals of their violent tendencies. Rampant means prevalent or unchecked, often characterized by a widespread or uncontrollable spread or growth. The film opens with Alex and his gang committing a series of brutal crimes, including rape and assault. After being arrested by the police, Alex is offered the opportunity to participate in an experimental rehabilitation program. The program is based on an aversion therapy, which involves conditioning Alex to associate violence with an intense physical reaction, such as nausea. Aversion means strong dislike or distaste for something, often characterized by a feeling of disgust or repulsion. As a result of the therapy, Alex is no longer able to commit violent acts, but he is also unable to defend himself or even make a choice. He is then released into society and finds that he is no longer able to function as a member of society. He is rejected by his former friends and his victims and is left alone, a clockwork orange, unable to make moral choices. The term clockwork orange is a metaphorical phrase used in the novel to describe a person or society that is mechanically predictable lacking in free will or independent thought. The term itself is a play on the phrase as queer as a clockwork orange, which means something that is strange or bizarre. The film raises questions about free will, morality, and the nature of evil, and it explores the concept of a person being stripped of their ability to choose between good and evil. Free will is the ability to make choices or decisions based on one's own volition, often involving the exercise of personal agency or autonomy. The film is known for its striking visuals, disturbing violence, and exploration of these complex themes. Before we continue, I would like to invite you to check out our online course at Thinkific. The Learning English with Movies course was designed for intermediate English language students who love movies and filmmaking. You can practice your English reading and listening skills, learn new key vocabulary and grammar, and confirm your comprehension with fun quizzes. The Learning English with Movies book is also available from Amazon. For more information as well as fun and useful tips and recommendations, you can follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Now, let's practice some useful grammar structures. Conditionals. In English, conditionals are used to express situations in which something will happen only if a certain condition is met. There are several types of conditionals, including the zero, first, second, third, and mixed conditionals. The zero conditional is used to express general truths or scientific facts and it is formed using the present simple tense in both the if clause and the main clause. Example, if a person is conditioned to associate violence with physical discomfort, they will avoid violence. The first conditional is used to express a possible future event or a present situation that is likely to happen, and it is formed using the present simple tense in the if clause and the future simple tense in the main clause. Example, if Alex continues to commit violent crimes, he will eventually be caught by the authorities. The second conditional is used to express a hypothetical or unlikely situation in the present or future, and it is formed using the past simple tense in the if clause, and the conditional would plus infinitive in the main clause. Example, if Alex had not been subjected to the experimental rehabilitation program, he would still be able to commit violent acts. The third conditional is used to express a hypothetical past situation and its hypothetical result, and it is formed using the past perfect tense in the if clause, and the conditional perfect, 
would have plus past participle in the main clause. Example. If the government had not implemented the rehabilitation program, Alex would have continued his life of crime. The mixed conditional is used to express a hypothetical past situation and its result in the present, and it is formed using the past perfect in the if clause and the conditional in the main clause. Example. If Alex had not been conditioned to associate violence with physical discomfort, he would still be committing violent crimes today. It is important to note that the order of the clauses can be changed and still make sense. Example. He would still be committing violent crimes today. If Alex had not been conditioned to associate violence with physical discomfort. These are just a few examples, but you can use conditionals to explore different aspects of the story, characters, themes and events of the movie, and speculate about different possible outcomes or alternate realities. It's also important to practice and pay attention to context to use the conditionals correctly, as the verb tense, and the meaning of the sentence will change with each type of conditional. Thanks for watching. Have you seen A Clockwork Orange? What's your favorite Stanley Kubrick film? What makes A Clockwork Orange so controversial? Write down your thoughts in the comments below.